Hello, welcome to this series of videos on the power series. What is a power series? This video here is an introduction to the power series and we'll have subsequent videos with a bunch of examples and a bunch of applications. Let's go ahead and get started. What is a power series? A power series is a series that has a very special form. What we've done before this, all of our series were full of numbers. And there was a formula called a sub n that represented the, the, the actual output that you get by putting in some counter number in. And we uh, are now for a power series, we'll still have constants, but we introduce x into the mix. This is one type of form where we have c sub n, which represents constants, it's kind of like the a sub n. You give me a n equals one, two, zero, whatever. I'll give you a coefficient. And then x is a variable. So c sub zero plus c sub one x plus c sub two x squared plus c sub three x cubed on forever. It's like a polynomial if you decide to stop after so many terms. What we're going to find out is that this is a special polynomial. And we not really officially a polynomial. So we. We give it a new name, it's called a power series, and it can be used to represent an actual function. What we, be, what we also will be concerned about is um, what x's make it converge. You can't just give a power series without saying which x's make it converge. And so we, um, we're gonna say that, well, what x's, when plugged in to the series, we revert back to all of the tests and try to figure out whether it converges for those x's. Okay, it's called the the interval of convergence that we'll have to go find. Okay, so it's going to converge for some values of x. It's going to diverge for other values of x. Okay, and we're worried about actually where it converges at. That's what we want to find. Where it diverges at, we just want to make sure we avoid using those x's because the, it won't be um, a con, you know a, a series that we can use you know for application's sake all right great so we're going to say that the series will be equal to a function that's going to be the sum the sum is actually going to be a function now now it has to be you know functions have domains and so the domain of the function basically you're representing a function as a series okay this this polynomial looking kind of expansion that goes on forever all right now the domain will be the x's that will basically cause this series to converge so your function might have a certain domain but the power series has to you know have you know it, it this will you can only use the equal sign for x's that make the series converge Okay, f of x can be used for other things, but when you want to represent f of x as a power series, you can only use it for the x's that make it converge. It looks like a polynomial with infinitely many terms. In fact, let's turn all the coefficients to one, and we can actually figure out exactly what the function is. We, we, we have enough knowledge right now to know exactly what the function is when we turn all these coefficients to ones. Okay. We're talking about one plus X plus X squared forever. X to the N keep on going X to the N plus one. The summation N equals zero to infinity of X to the N. It's our job to find out what function can be represented by this series. We have enough to know it right now. The reason why we have enough because it's a very special type of series. 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed from term to term you're multiplying by an x that's your ratio and this is the geometric series geometric series with ratio equals x okay well what about the geometric series what, what kind of x's make it converge though well for the geometric series it's about 
having the ratio be less than one in absolute value? Well, if your ratio is X, then you're gonna need X to be less than one in absolute value for you to be able to, you know, say that this power series represents the function that we're gonna go find. Because when we have a geometric series, we know exactly what the sum is. The sum is equal to a formula that you can plug into where you have the numerator as the first term and the denominator is one minus the ratio. Remember that. Well, our first term is a one and our ratio is an X. So according to this formula, so long as you stay between minus one and one, not including either of them, you can say that this power series is a representation of the function one over one minus X. Okay. And this will be the beginning of us building a library of functions that we can represent as a power series for certain values of X. Okay. Why do we care? Well, here's a visual of the function one over one minus X in uh, fuchsia, the, the, uh, the pink one there is the actual function. So why do we care? One application is that we can approximate the function by using the power series and stopping after so many terms. We call that a partial sum. If you stop after, uh, you know, the quadratic term, so the S sub, the number there, S sub N, corresponds to stopping after that term, okay? And so um, S sub two is, is one plus X plus X squared. It's a quadratic, okay? Now, between minus one and one, it's gonna mimic the function but not be a good approximation. The better approximation is by taking more terms. So take one plus X plus X squared plus X cubed plus X fourth plus X fifth. You'll get the S sub five, the fifth partial sum. Cause we're starting like at zero. That's a, that's a fifth degree. That's a, what's that called a quintic? That's a fifth degree approximation. All of these approximations will exactly equal the function when X is zero. We'll call that later the center of the power series. And then as you get further and further out, they'll start to differ away from the function. So if you want to approximate the function, you can take more and more terms. It turns out that stopping after the X term, that's actually the tangent line. And stopping after the quadratic term, that's a cubic approximation and so on. And, and so we can use this in applications. Um, we're gonna find out that uh, your, your calculator will, or any computer system will um, end up using a power series because it's something that's easy to compute. You know, having a polynomial is easy to compute. And so um, if, you, if you're asked to maybe integrate something that you can't integrate, you know, with, with you know, manipulative techniques that we learned, then your computer will approximate it and it will approximate it using a power series up until they get exactly maybe like 10 digits of accuracy. And so um, that's what's going on behind the scenes. That, that just lays the groundwork. It's an introduction to power series. From here, we'll do a more generic power series um, um, representation and then uh, we, where we can move and center someplace else. And then we'll be able to look at more functions that, that basically come from the geometric series that we just looked at, 1 over 1 minus x. We can get other series by taking its derivative, by taking its integral, and we'll build, up, we'll build up this library of functions that we know can be represented by a very particular power series, and we can use them in applications. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer. I'm here to help you through this Calc 2 journey. Please ask me any questions, comment down below, like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.